target is the Albanese government prioritising climate change over the threat of Islamic terror? And is the PM wasting spy agencies' time writing reports on changing sea levels rather than the threat of foreign interference? Well, I told you recently that the influence from the heads of our security agencies, including ASIO boss Mike Burgess and Australia's top spy Andrew Shearer, has been diminishing under the Albanese government and that Penny Wong instead is taking a leading and highly influential voice on national security. The tensions between the intel community and the Albanese government are coming to the surface. The Nightly's Christopher Dorr reports that our spies are being left out in the cold by the Albanese government. To stress how significant this is, it's highly unusual th for there to be any tension between government and the intelligence community. It's highly unusual. The focus of security agencies is protecting Australia from our main threats, which ASIO has outlined are Islamic terror and Chinese interference. But the left-wing Albanese and Penny Wong don't want to talk about these issues. They rarely, if ever, mention Islamic terror or speak about Beijing in critical terms. And what have they had our spy agencies divert resources to? Climate change. Christopher Dorr writes, while China remains our number one threat to national security, one of the first orders Albanese issued as PM, after asking for some Beijing tourist office brochures, was to insist the top national security and intelligence official, Andrew Shearer, drop everything to launch an urgent, urgent project, not into Chinese or Russian espionage, not into Middle Eastern terror threats, but climate change. Conduct a cumbersome theoretical analysis into what threat climate change might pose to national security. So Andrew Shearer has had to juggle a view into climate change while protecting Australia from terror attacks. And the threat level has clearly increased in the past five months since the October 7 massacre, despite the Albanese government refusing to technically raise the threat level. Well, just before those terror attacks in mid last year, Andrew Shearer somewhat diplomatically spoke about that juggle in some rare public comments. It's, it's widely known before, um, uh, before the election, uh, the now government committed to a major assessment on the national security implications of climate change. Uh, when they came into office, the government, the Prime Minister, uh, tasked me with preparing that assessment. And that's an absolutely huge body of work. Uh, it involves really detailed intelligence analysis, outreach to our partners, to non-government experts across Australia and globally, uh, a lot of really tough methodological uh, thinking mm. uh, and, as I said at the start, a, a really complex set of issues to get your arms around and just organise intellectually. So we have to be able to do that while at the same time warning about the possibility of a, a terror attack. Juggling a complex climate change report while at the same time worrying about the terror attack. Hello, just focus on the terror attack. Is this really the best use of our spy chief's time, writing reports on climate change? Get the department officials to do that. The spy agencies should be solely protecting us all from the threat of terrorism. And Christopher Dorr reports that Albanese has yet to even release the big climate change study the top intelligence guy was dragged away from his day job to conduct. He says that some in the intel community are now starting to feel isolated, exposed, ignored and frustrated by this approach. Well, Shira is highly respected in the United States and in the Five Eyes community. He even spent time in Washington. He worked at the Centre for Strategic and International Studies. He developed influential relationships on both sides of politics. Australia being seen to have continuity in national security is the main reason Albanese kept him on after winning office. Shearer had played a major role in securing AUKUS. He was also instrumental in Operation Sovereign Borders even earlier. But now there's increasing speculation that he won't be reappointed when his term is up next year. 
Now, Paul Keating just last week said that Albanese should have sacked both Shearer and Mike Burgess when he became PM. Sacked the spy bosses because they're worried about the threat from China. Well, that was Keating's argument. It's interesting that after these remarks, Treasurer Jim Chalmers stepped in to defend Mike Burgess, but didn't mention Shearer. Have a listen. Uh, it would be strange if I agreed with 100% of what Paul Keating says. Uh, and I disagree strongly uh, with him when it comes to his uh, comments about Penny Wong and also about Mike Burgess. Uh, I think Paul is wrong about Penny and I think he's wrong about Mike. Wrong about Mike, but odd not to mention Shearer. And Albanese, by the way, didn't bother defending either of them. Now, all of our lives, your life, mine, we're all so busy with family and children and work and paying the bills that we rarely step back to look at the bigger picture of our country. But let's look at it. We've got allegations of kidnappings. We have hate preachers inciting jihad. We have the burning of the Australian flag on the Opera House steps. We have violent assaults on citizens and death threats. It's insanity. And yet not one major national security press conference or address by the Prime Minister with the Australian flags beside him to call all of this out. Nothing. Imagine how different the political leadership would have been at this time with any other Prime Minister, either Labor or Liberal, if it had been a centrist Labor PM. And despite ASIO coming out just last week to warn about Chinese foreign interference being the single most serious threat to our nation, again, where was the address from the Prime Minister vowing to fight and target and crack down on foreign espionage or any attempts to interfere with our democracy. Because Albanese clearly doesn't want to criticise China. He wants to cosy up to Beijing and President Xi, even though ASIO says they are our top security threat. And Albanese now looks like he wants to return funding to UNRWA despite its links to Hamas, which haven't been sorted out even though Islamic terror is our top terror threat. We have this inconceivable, incomprehensible and bewildering situation where the PM and the Foreign Minister are routinely failing to publicly speak about the top security threats to our country.